Okay, my friends, this is a disaster in the making. The earth is just being destroyed. We're looking for muon neutrinos and electron neutrinos attached together, creating muons and electron showers. If we could do this, we could create tons of free energy, I believe. And guess what? We can do that. Here it is right here. This is electron showers. And this is the sterile muons. Now, if we could do that, this is what we can do. Creating these neutrinos, which I just showed you, the muon neutrino, electron neutrino, turning into electrons and muons. The energy of the neutrinos turns into a few hundred giga electron volts up to a few trillion electron volts. That's an unbelievable amount of increase in energy. And you can see it happening. This is the brilliance factor, the lumin uh, luminosity factor. Now, I'm showing you right there trillions of electron volts. Now, that's only one part of the thing. This is the physics for electron showers. Nobody's been able to do this before. They wanted to do this years ago at CERN, never could figure it out. We've done it, and I'm showing it. And if we could harvest that energy... All right, I'm not going to go too much with this because this, this is a tragedy that shouldn't happen. We should be able to harvest this energy right here in a solar collector which is going to collect raw electrons. If we can increase that energy value from just a few electron volts up to billions, just think of the increase in energy. And we did nothing other than force it to crush its fields together because we used a Venturi. They're trying to hit them head on in big particles and slam raw and then, then have to have all this elegant equipment to harvest in that energy. We don't need that. We could just squirt that right into a solar panel, just like you do on your house now if you have solar panels. They collect a little sunlight. We're going to be collecting this, which is sunlight on steroids. And when I say steroids, I am not kidding you. When they're talking about Higgs fields, you want to see some Higgs fields? There's some Higgs fields. That is that white shower and then and then it pops back together and it creates the Higgs fields and that's exactly what they show here this is the gamma ray burst we create a gamma ray burst all that white stuff then the black line and then the afterglow which is where the black reattaches to the whites and it becomes back to regular material just right here separates here that's fission comes back to here together here that's fusion and this is where it all is afterglow and if we harvest it right there we might be able to get somewhere get out of this problem we got with our earth now look at this high luminosity when you see luminosity it means glow if that's not luminosity there is no such thing as luminosity this is so luminous that it's squirting backwards so much power that the radiation is absolutely enormous even behind itself, because it's basically a subatomic explosion. All right, remember I just talked about high luminosity. This is what they want to do, exactly what we're doing. When you talk about luminosity, that's glow. And if you can't see glow here, that's as, as luminous as you can possibly get. It started with almost nothing. It increased its energy value until it became so explosive that the reverse concussion of this explosion is lighting up waves that you would never see. You'd never see these. It's, that's the reverse concussion. If you can see over there, this is what's called reverse EMF, electromagnetic force. See those waves? Those are going backwards. They're not supposed to be going that way. The reason they're going that way is because of this literally subatomic nuclear explosion. And it's happening boom, 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 like pulses from this red laser, slapping those particles into concussion, into separation into this luminous stage. And that's what they're trying to do at CERN. Luminosity is the key to energy. So they do a big, big shutdown. And they did exactly what I told them I was doing. Because I went to the University of Geneva for particle physics. And I showed them all my stuff. This was years ago. 
And uh, I said, we're using sea moss to see this stuff. Because first of all, they said, well, how could you possibly see this? I said, we're using sea moss. We are absorbing what's being radiated. We're not going inside. They're using, they're using detectors that interfere with the particles. That's why they call it the um, observer effect. When you go in and you start looking at them, it changes them. We don't, we're not shining any light into them. We're not t- taking any magnetic fields out of them. We're just absorbing the radiated energy out of it. And that's what they want to do now. So they, what they did was they put in focusing magnets and CMOS. The same thing I told them to do. We focus it through a Venturi. They're, they can't do that, I don't think, with the protons as, as well as we can with the photons. But anyway... The Higgs, uh, the high luminosity LHC, which should be operational beginning 2029, will allow physicists to study known mechanics in greater detail, known mechanisms, such as the Higgs boson. I just showed you that. And observe rare new phenomena that might reveal themselves. Well, I'm going to show you some stuff that's going to blow your, your mind. For example, the high luminosity LHC will produce at least 15 million Higgs bosons per year compared to around 3 million from LHC in 2017. 3 million, I can do that in 10 seconds. I can do that in 10 seconds. This is our, these are our Higgs fields. <laughs> That's tick, and there they are. Now, you want to see some unknown, unobserved things that, that nobody knows anything about. And I don't either. I'm not saying I know anything about it, but um, I can show you things that I, I can't explain, which is the one right here. Look at this. See that? That's coming off of two Higgs fields. And I think this one here is a reverse spinner. And it's, it's spinning its particle this way instead of this way. That's all I can take away from that. And that this, par- this field is scrubbing against that one. And flipping the particle away from its reverse spin. That's that's my interpretation of that one. But I have stuff here that um, it all makes sense when you when you really take your time and look at it. But um, it's still a lot of speculation. But I'm telling you right now, there's no speculation there. That was a red laser. That's acceleration. That's division of the particles right there. That's fission. Back to here is fusion. In between, it appears to be almost unlimited amount of energy. If we can use it, (laughs) we're fools not to. Okay, as I probably showed you already, but I just want to reinforce, this is all about electron showers. And I showed you very clearly what electron showers are. (laughs) Here they are right there. These are photons that have divided into their electron showers and their sterile muons and this is also exactly what Fermilab and CERN say the muon and electron neutrino together the black and white ball turn into muons sterile and electron showers and that is exactly what it is the black ball and the white ball just turns into a shower so we're I'm showing you precisely what they're showing and now the gamma ray bursts are virtually identical to this Identical. I mean, if I didn't show it to you, I sh- I've shown it so many times, maybe I didn't show it correctly, but trust me, that's what it is. Is a gamma ray burst basically identical to that, which is identical to this. This is the white portion. Emission. These are prompted emission of photons. Then that black line, and then they come back together. That is exactly identical. To coming through here, and there's a black line, they come back together. So, this is not unknown, and these are the energy values that we really need to get to. Well, we don't need to get this high, but I mean, if we could, we could get there, that's amazing. 100 giga electron volts to a few trillion electron gigavolts, uh, electron volts. And these are from these neutrinos and anti neutrinos of all flavors. And they're talking about electrons and muon neutrinos. That's exactly what I showed you. Precisely. And if we can somehow get a a harvester in the midst of this collision right there. 
and harvest it before it gets back together and before we let it get back together we run it through our devices and that's that's what electricity is all about is taking the white part and, and isolating it from the black part and then letting it get to the black part that's when you get the electric flow that's electricity that's power that's energy Okay, I'm just going to throw this right at you. If you are a physicist or know anybody that thinks they are a physicist or, or, or have any teachers, science teachers, physicists, anything, this is going to be a story about the LHC, Large Hadron Collider. They were going to use it as a photon collider. They did a special meeting back in 1978. Now, I go back to 1972 or so with all this research I did on these particle charges and so forth. And I came up with the fact that the transfer of energy is from light to atomic vapor. And I mean, I got a lot of stuff. I did a lot of work on this. And not just quick. I did a lot, a lot, a lot of work on this. And I finally realized that everything had to be a dipole. And I was sort of confused in my theory to a degree, but I could see I wasn't going to get anywhere with these people. So I got out of this and went into my own business. But what they're showing here is photon collisions. They would take protons, collide them, and then end up seeing these bosons. Well, they're talking about quadratic gauge coupling. That's my particles I'm showing. These are Feynman diagrams. They're still using them today. Now, this is the physics case for studying photons. There was a special meeting in 1978 to discuss the prospect of such collisions. 1978, that's like 45 years ago. The LHC's predecessor collided electrons with positrons, but they didn't really do it correctly. These collisions are very clean as we're collecting photons, which are elementary particles. That's what I'm working with is light photons, the elementary particles. They don't come, they're not composed of anything. They're just one little particle. It was first proposed to do this type of physics many years ago at CERN, but the project didn't materialize. They didn't know how to do it. This is the history of this photon collision stuff. We're colliding photons. I'm showing photon collisions. That's a photon. That's photons of light. And now we are creating these, these mass ejections here. These are the brightest objects in the universe they're seeing out there. And we're seeing them on a lab bench created because of a Venturi. Now how this actually, they don't know how this occurs. This is, this is totally not understood. But they see this, and they see it come out as a cone, precisely identical to what we see in our experiments. I, there's no difference whatsoever, as I will show you or have shown you. So get your physicist friends, get your teachers and all that, and ask them about this. Why can't we use this to collect some energy? Why can't we put a harvester right in there, right like that? Well, it is a solar collector. And they're using new transition metals now so they can get all the different frequencies. Very, very efficient. And uh, put it right in here before they collect back together. We got raw energy. And that raw energy equates to billions of times more energy than it was before it created this absolute unbelievable luminosity. And that's what they're trying to do at CERN now. And they're talking about, well, 19, I mean, it's Fermilab somewhere. 2029, we should be able to see this stuff. <laughs> 2029. <laughs>